Up until now, if you wanted an inline choke like this, I would refer you to ABR Industries because they make great coax and they make great inline chokes. But what if you don't want to use ABR Industries? What if you want to use Messi and Poloni? Well, now I have a second resource to send you to because a gentleman by the name of Brian, KF8ASE, has taken it upon himself to make and sell inline chokes made with Messi and Poloni coax, Messi and Poloni Evo connectors, and genuine Mix 31 ferrite beads. And I'm gonna tell you all about them this time on Ham Radio Tube. And they look exactly like this. So we've got two of the four that he makes. This guy here is called the Poda Choke. So we have first this beautiful, delicious Messi and Poloni Evo PL259. And then that is connected to the Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7 coaxial cable. Then we have five Mix 31 ferrite beads in here. And then that is connected to the SO239 Evo connector from Messi and Poloni. But what if you're a QRP guy? What if you don't want something this big? Well, he makes this guy. This is the QRP choke. So again, Messi and Poloni Evo connector this time in BNC mail. That is going to Airborne 5 coax, which we just did a video on that. I love that coax. Then we have three little chokes in here. Again, Mix 31. And then that is going to a female Messi and Poloni Evo connector. Now, he also makes a really big one. If you've got a high power station, an amplifier, he makes two other versions that have really big cores on there as well. Uh, and I'll flash that up on the screen right now so you can see what those look like. But I think these two are the more um, interesting ones that the portable operator is going to want to have. So. I'm not very good with my spectrum analyzer uh, or my nano VNA, so I'm not even gonna pretend to try and show what these look like in tests, but I, I asked Brian if he's done the testing and he says for the really big ones that are not here, uh, he has seen an approximate 60 dB drop on the HF spectrum uh, in terms of common mode current coming back or RF coming back on the uh, shield of the coax. For the POTA choke, he sees an approximate 35 5 dB drop and on the QRP choke about a 25 dB drop. Now you may be asking yourself well how come this one has five and how come this one has three? Well the short answer is he wanted to make the QRP choke just as small and compact as possible and with the 25-ish dB uh, of attenuation uh, that these chokes are providing uh, he thinks that that is a good enough number there so that is why. Now you've also got this cool, I like this sticker. He's got the little antenna logo on there, but he's also got, and I think this is great marketing because like if you're out with a bunch of buddies doing parks on the air and you've got a choke, people are gonna be like, where'd you get that choke? And then if he didn't have a sticker on, they'd be like, I don't know, I forget. But he's got KF8 ASE ham radio supply. That's his Etsy store. He's got his phone number, his email, and KF8 ASE ham radio supply .com, his website where you can purchase these things. A fantastic, uh, very, very nicely built bit of kit. Uh, he rates these for 300 watts. I think he's being very conservative with that uh, because I know for a fact that uh, both of these cables can handle more than 300 watts, but uh, that's the rating they get. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the chokingness of it, heat buildup perhaps, I don't know, but you should be able to run plenty of power through these, no problem. Another nice little detail, he didn't make these any longer than they need to be. Notice there's not a lot of coax stick out. He wanted to make these as small and compact as possible, so hopefully regardless of what kind of bag or what size bag you're using, you should be able to fit these chokes in there, no problem. Now, where should you put these on your antenna? Should you put them at the antenna? Should you put them at the radio? Let's talk about that. And would you believe the answer is it depends? Well, it is. Depending on the antenna you're using is going to depend where you're going to put your choke. Let's take a look at some examples. So first I'll show you the most common setup I use. This is the Pactena 49 to 1 NFED half wave. And you can see the coax is connected directly to the feed point. I don't use any counterpoise ever with my NFED half waves, including my NFED half wave at home, because my coax is acting as the counterpoise, the shield of the coax. But I don't want that stuff getting back into my radio, so I'm gonna put the choke right at the radio. So now, 
we're blocking anything from the shield of the coax is going to stop right here and bounce right back. So we just screw the PL259 into the radio and then we screw the PL259 from the coax into the SO239 of the choke and we're good to go. That's how I run it with an NFED half wave. And I would do the exact same thing with my QRP radios, in this case the ASU FTX1F. Here you can see the Messi and Poloni choke, beautiful, going in to my Messi and Poloni Airborne 5. And I, I love that this is made of Airborne 5 too. It's such a good coax, but it's, it's so small and lightweight. That's just awesome. So again, with NFED half waves, that's how I'm going to set it up. Choke at the radio, coax going up to the uh, feed point, no counterpoise. But what if you're like my good friend, Mr. The Smoke and Ape, who always puts counterpoise on everything? ABC, always be choking, always be counterpoison. What do you do with the choke then if you got a counterpoise on your NFET half wave? Well, you're gonna do something like this. We've got the antenna feed point here, and then I have a BNC to SO239 adapter, and then we have the choke coming off of that, and then the coax going into the choke. And on the Pactena antennas, they've got two ground lugs here where you'd put a little banana plug and your counterpoise wire there. So the counterpoise is acting like a counterpoise instead of the coax acting like a counterpoise. So you're eliminating any common mode current right at the antenna feed point. So if you wanna run it like that and with the counterpoise, that's how you're gonna set it up. You do the same exact thing if you're running a nine to one, if this was a nine to one, or probably the four to ones, the, the Ribikovs that everybody's using now because they're using the counterpoise. So they're gonna put the choke right at the feed point and then have just the regular SO or PL259 going into your radio. But what if you're not using a four to one or a nine to one or a 49 to one? Where do you put the choke there if you're using a dipole or a vertical? Well, you're gonna put that right at the feed point, whether it's uh, a DX Commander, a Wolf River Coils. Today I have the REZ Antenna Recon 40 set up here. You're gonna put it right at the feed point because your antenna already has the other side, if you will. That's what these ground radials are for. These are doing the same thing as what a counterpoise would do. They're, they're the other side of the antenna. Radiating element, other side, the ground side, the shield side. So we're gonna take our choke and we're gonna connect it to the antenna feed point, And then we're gonna run directly to the coax just like this. So now we have a perfectly set up ground radial vertical antenna with proper choking here, all done right, all done good, all with, in this case, Messi and Poloni chokes, thanks to KF8 ASE Ham Radio Supply. Now the last thing I wanna talk about, and I don't actually have, but I have enough knowledge of the entire catalog of Messi and Poloni 50 ohm cables, I can speak with some intellectual ability about this. His higher power chokes, the ones that have the big ferrites on them, he's got two options. It, those come with Ultraflex 10 coax, and he has one option that has heat sinks on there. Now, what are those heat sinks for? Well, Stefano at Messi and Poloni has recognized that there's a lot of people that are running 1500 watts, especially like FT8. It's a thing that happens. So he made heat sinks for the Evo connectors. If you've ever run an extended period of time on FT8, even at 100 watts, touch the back of your coax, touch the PL259, it gets warm. So those heat sinks are there to dissipate the heat to protect the center dielectric, the foam dielectric inside the, the cables. So if you're, if you're an amplifier guy, you might wanna look into the version that he makes just for your home shack, may, probably not out here in the field, but check out those chokes that he makes that has the heat sinks on there. I have some of those heat sinks. I have them on some of my cables. I don't really use them at home because I don't run power, but I have them, they're awesome, they're metal, and they basically, instead of this uh, metal part here screwing into the back of the Evo connector, there's a big heat sink. It's about, I don't know, three quarters, maybe an inch long uh, of just pure metal heat dissipation goodness. So if that's something you're doing, high power stuff, you might want to look into that. But for us portable guys, this POTA choke or the QRP choke is going to be more than perfect. So that's my little spiel on these. Brian, thanks for sending these out. I love them. I think they're fantastic. Very, very nicely built. Again, you can find these on Etsy. I will leave a link in the description. And until next time, my name is Mike K at MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time. 73.